JMU Nation is Dave Thomas, the radio play-by-play voice for JMU football and men's basketball, spending some time with you men's basketball coach, Mark Byington. Coach, how are you, first of all? I'm great. Um, I'm getting a little stir-crazy like everybody else and, and wanting to have interaction with um, you know people everywhere, but um, I am settled in Harrisonburg. Uh, th- that's a great feeling. Um, I found a house I liked and, and, and unpacking boxes and, and getting the team settled, so... Uh, it, it's it's much much better than last time I saw you. Our last time we talked, it was a little crazier then. Well, if you paid attention to social media like JMU fans have, there's been a lot going on. So let's just sort of dive right in and, and try to get some answers to some questions. First of all, just give us an overview of the staff that you put together. Yeah, I wanted the staff to you know kind of be um, kind of fit different areas of of my my weaknesses and and, and also address a lot of things that are important. I thought with um, you know, encompassing a lot of different th- areas of need. So um, the, the first part of it, I brought some guys with me in my previous job from Georgia Southern up here. And uh, I brought Andrew Wilson. Uh, he was with me for seven years at, at College of Charleston and also seven years at Georgia Southern. And so uh, he's a great fit because he understands um, exactly the plan I'm going to put in place. And I think another advantage is when we were rebuilding Georgia Southern, he kind of saw what it was like on the ground floor of that. And uh, I think there are some definitely advantages to that. I brought John Kremens with me. Um, it's Bobby Kremens' um, nephew. He was also with me for a couple of years at College of Charleston and a couple of years at Georgia Southern. And uh, Keith Chesley was my operations guy there and, and I brought him along. And so far I've hired two guys um, that weren't with my previous staff. Uh, one of them, Xavier Joyner, who um, you know has great ties to Maryland, D.C. Um, I love the fact that he's coached at all levels and had the grind in his business and understands, you know, what it's like to build something. And um, so, you know, he was at Mount St. Mary's last year. And uh, then I hired another guy named Calvin Baker, who's going to be my director of player development and recruiting. And Calvin, um, you know, he's you he should be known in the state of Virginia and actually the CEA. He was started at William and Mary. He was all freshman team at William & Mary and then transferred to Virginia for his last couple of years and uh, played for Dave Lado and then Tony Bennett there. And, and and he's also, you know, great Virginia ties, great Maryland ties. And last year he was an assistant coach at Maryland Eastern Shore. So uh, we still have one more spot to f- uh, fill out with the staff. Um, we're waiting on some some things with the university and I'm, I'm kind of be a little more patient with that spot. So uh, we'll be adding one more at some point. You talked about you've been able to get settled a bit in Harrisonburg. Has your staff made it into the burg? And how much communication have they been able to have with the team you're assembling? Yeah, so we've had to be careful, um, just like everybody else. And also, we're, we're trying to do what we can to get us as far along as we can as a basketball program. Um, so, you know, the staff has kind of been in and out. Um, uh, most of them have already, you know, found their place to live and, and settled in Harrisonburg. Um, but you know, sometimes we're in the office and, and we're trying to be smart with what we have to do, whether it's, um, you know, getting organized and, and getting on the same page. But a lot of the stuff that we can do right now, they can also do from home. And and the main responsibilities really in these first 40 something days uh, was our players, our current players, and then also recruiting. And so, um, you know, they've been able to get settled, been able to get adjusted. Um, they, they hit the ground running. All of them are experienced. Um, so I really didn't have to teach them how to do their job. It was more, more so just organizing and putting guys in the right spots. You brought a style of play with you. You knew what you wanted to do and bringing a couple of your assistants from Georgia Southern with you. But as you began to recruit and then evaluate the needs from what you saw from last year's team, how did your staff have input into the, the guys you've recruited and have signed to this point? They all have great connections and, you know, and, and, and they all, you know, have a passion for recruiting and, 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 and truth be told, a lot of times in recruiting, it's the product you can sell. And so, you know, you know, we're selling the campus, you know, we're, we're selling university, we're selling the value of education and a lot of the positives um, that we have at James Madison, you know, if it's easy to go ahead and, and put those in place. And, and, and so um, we came in, we, we kind of got, got adjusted to, um, not being able to have official visits and not being able to go visit the other guys. So once we kind of learn how to do things um, on Zoom or, or, or whatever we have to do on the computer and, and figure out that lifestyle, 
uh, we really hit the ground running. And the staff had, you know, um, you know great connections. Uh, we were already recruiting some guys. We, we knew some guys and we just had to evaluate them. And, and the evaluation that we did a lot of times was just watching video. And so um, we've been watching a ton, a ton of basketball of the recruits and then also our current team. And so that, that's been a, a majority of part of our job right now. Now, when you were first hired, you, you talked about the, the team that was in place and that you wanted to try to retain as most of them as possible. But as players became available, either via the transfer portal or high school kids became interested in, the, in your job at James Madison, how did that affect the roles of guys that were on the team last year? Well, I think the easiest thing to say is, is, is the guys that, that um, we're really excited about are, are, are currently on the roster and returning. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, when there's, when there's a coaching change, um, you know, some guys might find better opportunities elsewhere. And, um, and so, you know, you just have to understand that. And, you know, as a coach, you want everybody to be happy on your team. And that's hard to do. And, and sometimes when um, you're, you're having a player on your team who's not going to fit the style or not going to play, and, and they could be happier elsewhere. You can't be selfish and you got to go ahead and let them pursue other opportunities. And and sometimes guys, you know, even before, you know, I kind of get my foot on the ground, able to build a relationship with them, they decide to pursue other opportunities. So um, the easiest way to put it is the guys that are here and, and, and returning, uh, really excited about, um, they believe in what we're doing. Uh, they want to win. Um, you know, we've had, a, we've had a lot of team meetings and things like that with them. And, and they're excited to play, excited to be here, excited to get going. So um, the, the right guys are here right now. So that being said, how important have those conversations been with the returning players about what you're putting around them? Because they will be somewhat the nucleus. They, they're they familiar with JMU, at least a little bit. They're familiar with the CAA. So how important have those talks been to make sure that they understand where you're going and what the mission is? Yeah, the only thing I've been frustrated with is taking the job is not being around those returning guys. And, um, you know, that's that's hard. You know, um, I'm someone who, who loves teaching. I love getting on the court. I love developing guys. It's a great way for us to develop relationships and, and to get them to understand things. And so that's been the biggest challenge, really, since taking over the job is not having them around day to day and not being able to work with them and not being able to build a relationship with them. Um, but having, you know, a core group of experienced guys coming back, um, you know, it, it is going to be, ha has some advantages. You know, Matt Lewis is going to be one of the returning leading scorers in the league. Um, you know, I, Julian was a, a all freshman um, last year for, for one week of the season. And I think he's on a great sophomore year. I'm excited about Javis. Uh, didn't have much of an opportunity last year, but I think he's going to you know, really fit. Uh, Mike Christmas. Is, is talented. Uh, my staff and I, we just watched the East Carolina game uh, a couple of days ago, and he made, it was five for five in the, in the game, uh, shooting three-pointers, so so that's great. And then, you know, another guy who's kind of been a backup, I, I think is going to be really good for us, is Zach Jacobs. And, you know, you kind of look at his games last year when he was dependent on more, um, when Dwight Wilson was hurt, you know, he had 20-point games, 16-point games, 15-point games, and, um, he can shoot threes, he can, he can, he can score. So, you know, I think a lot of guys who, like I said, the, the right guys coming back, I think are really going to fit and have success with us. You mentioned Matt Lewis's name. Obviously, he's pursuing some opportunities at the next level. How much have you talked to Matt lately and kind of where is that situation? Well, I, I talked to him, you know, two, three, four times a week. And, um, you know, he, he came to Harrisonburg a couple of times. And, and, and one time I went up and, and saw him, um, you know, it's, his process of going through the NBA and trying to get evaluated, um, he had my full support from the very beginning of that. And I thought it was a great idea. I've been through it before. And, you know, it's you, you put things through and, and how it works, you put things through to the NBA um, undergraduate evaluation. And what they do is they kind of predict to you and they say, this is where we think you would get drafted or not get drafted. And they kind of give you advice. It, it's actually a great process. So. We went through that with Matt. Right now, he's open to talk to NBA teams. Uh, they can call him. He can't work out for them. So he's at a disadvantage to where he can't go do uh, live in-person stuff. But he is able to do some uh, virtual stuff. Um, he is able to do um, some interviews and things like that. So we're trying to help him along the process. The 
The NBA is in kind of a state of flux right now where I know June 3rd was the last day that he was able to kind of make a decision whether he's coming back or staying. And they're pushing that back and they haven't set a new date. So we're, we're trying to work with him, help him out and do, what, do what's going to be best for him. Could this process make him better for next year? If he returns to JBU by going through this and getting some feedback from NBA teams, how does this help a college player get better? Definitely. Um, you know, what you find out is, is kind of what the NBA thinks about you. And, you know, they'll, they'll say, you know, you need to work on this or you're really strong in this area. And um, it, it kind of gives you a, a plan to what they see that you have to do to be able to make that league. Uh, the NBA is the best of the best. And um, it, it's you have to be extremely talented and unfortunate and blessed to be able to play in that league. But, you know, somebody like Matt's in a win-win situation. You know, he uh, if, if he's able to go to the NBA next year, great. You know, he's able to live his dream and do that you know, immediately. Um, if not, he's able to come back and work on those things and, and come back to James Madison and, uh, and, and get us winning. Um, has a chance to be the all-time leading scorer. Um, I think he has a chance to be the player of the year in the league next year. So he has a lot of, you know, positives on both ways, either NBA or, or come back to James Madison. And not to mention, you know, finished with a business degree in one of the best business schools in the country.